time. My name is Pewdie, let me not waste your time. Today I'll be showing you how to use particles in DaVinci Resolve. The majority of the information that I learned about how to use particles is actually originates from Darren Fernet's YouTube videos on his channel, so you go check that out. He has tons of tutorials going over way more in depth the particle system in Fusion. What I'm going to show you today is the basics on how I would make and use particles in my edits like this. Nothing too much nor too complicated. I'm in my timeline here, and I'm just going to add a Fusion composition by going up to Effects, down to Toolbox, Effects, and then dragging this Fusion composition onto our timeline over here. And I'm just going to make it like 200 frames, but so if we're at 24 frame composition and we need 200 frames, it's like about eight seconds. So we'll go around there. This is eight seconds around here. Uh, let's open this up in our fusion composition. So let's go to the fusion tab. So in order to start to generate particles, we need to add a P emitter. So shift space, type in P emitter. One of the most important nodes you're gonna need in order to use the particles, as well as the second node, which is the P render. So shift space, P render, and that will give you everything you need in order to generate some particles. And this is take a look at it in our viewer, say two on our P render. And you can see, we just have our particles in the middle of our screen right here, super small. Let's go to our P emitter and we can adjust our settings over here. So we, the first setting that we have over here under the emitter is the number. So this control controls how many particles are being generated every single frame in our render timeline. So right now it's, we're on the first frame and we're generating 10 particles. But if we say leave this going on, you see it's about to get more populated, 10 more particles every single frame. So in order to counteract that, what we need to do is keyframe it. So we're going to keyframe this at the beginning and then go to the next frame. We're going to keyframe it again and to put that to zero. And I'm just going to go back to our first frame and let's just generate, say like, 100 particles and right now they're being limited in that little circle as you can see to only being spawned there and if we can adjust this if we can bring this out and we can have it spawner in this bigger circle but if we want to adjust what the region on where we want this to spawn we go up to the region tab you can see it over here and then adjust the settings over here so you have all these controls in order to adjust the sphere or you have other controls to control where the particles are spawning from i use line a bunch i use bitmap sometimes and then usually i put it on all so it's going to spawn all across this composition that we have in our render viewer now it would be nice if we could see the particles. So where would we change that information? It'll be in the style. So in style right now, we have the point style of our particles and we can change this to end gone and that'll give us a nice easier way to see our particles. So let's just put that on our circle over there. And then we go down to our size controls and let's bring the size up. And now we can start seeing those particles right there. And you can go above 0.5. I usually go even like the two for the whole thing. And then under size, we have our size variance. So if we adjust this, we have some particles that are bigger than others and then we can adjust the size to Z scale as well. And so you'll have more that are coming at the camera per se. So you can do something like this and that'll give us a nice range for our particle sizes. So those are the main basic controls in order to just generate particles. And now let's go to the controls tab and look at what we have. So right now we have the number variance. So it's right now it's only spawning 100 particles on this one frame. Let's say we want to get the version and say we want to say let's spawn 10 particles every single frame, but we put this number variance up and it's going to say to two. Now it's going to bounce between either eight or 12 or numbers in between uh, spawning those particles every single frame. And yeah, you can't really see the difference. Maybe I'll put it down to like one right now, where one or two particles, particles are being spawned every single frame. But after 100 frames, they start to die out. As you can see, put this other control we have over here, which is, which is lifespan. So lifespan is how long a particle will last on our screen. And so let's just, let's say, go back to our original 100. If we go past 100, they all die at 100. You just need to put this far up as we want. I usually don't go past how far the composition is, but you can, let's just do like 200 and around there is fine. So now the particles are existing for 200 frames and will die out after 200 frames. You also have the lifespan variance. So some can die out for then, depending on how high you put this. So now we have 100. So if we get towards like the 50 range, you can see if they're 50% range, they'll start dying out maybe. Yeah, or I guess this back half over here. I don't really mess with that too much. I just know the lifespan is important in order to keep the particles on the screen. Position variance, this is allowing us to kind of reseed whatever our position is over here. For some reason, zero is a different position than wherever this is. If you really want to reseed all the positions, you can go up to the random seed and this will reseed where our particles are being spawned from. So that's a nice little layout, I think. Nice left and right. Maybe a little barren up there, but all as well. Now let's go down to velocity. So velocity is making our particles move. So let's, if we increase this velocity up to all the way up here, we have our particles going super fast to the right side. And so let's go down to some around there. So now they're traveling a little bit to the left and right. And because we sized them up in Z space, the particles that are bigger are moving faster than the particles that are moving behind because 
because they're sized up in the Z space. Now, in order to adjust this, we can do velocity variance. So not all the particles are moving at the same time or even in the same direction, depending on what you have. So if you want all the particles to go in the same direction, you want the velocity to be bigger than the velocity variance. So let's bring this up here and let's bring this down here. And now all the particles are going in the same direction. Once this velocity variance goes past this velocity control, then we start getting particles going the other way. So this is something to know about. Angle, so if we make this angle, so go upwards so 90 degrees. Now our particles will be going up instead of right. We can also have angle variance and let's make this like five. And so some of the particles are gonna go straight up. Some of them are gonna go to the left-ish or they're gonna lean left. Some are gonna lean right. Let's put this velocity down more so we can see they're going. So yeah, maybe I, I put the angle variance higher so you can see, but that's, that's too high. Because if you want particles going all directions, you can do that. But I want them to go in general, same direction upwards, just a little bit more varied. And now, there we go. Something like that will work. We have that. Then we also have angle Z. So angle Z is gonna point the particles coming in the direction at us. So we do 90. So 90 particles are going away from us. Negative 90 particles are coming towards us like that. There you go. Let's just angle this up to 90. And let's put some variance like say 45. And now we have something like this going. Now maybe this is a nice thing. Let's go change our style. Change our end gone to say something like this. And we can actually make a circle or a star. Like the stars like this is fine. Let's make it four sided star and go to our controls and go down to our rotation. So our rotation. And I guess what it does? It rotates the particles. Uh, right now it's doing it in 3D space, but we really want to change this to the Z. Z1 is the one that focuses on the left and right type of spin. If we're doing 3D space, we move just the TX and the Y. Right now we have the particles always facing camera and they will usually always do that if they're not in 3D space. If they're in 3D space, you can arrange them so they're either not facing camera or you can like kind of see like a paper kind of effect with the particle. It looks more like a snowflake, I guess, per se. There, let's make this a solid. God, there we go. And now we have our stars going up just like that. And that's just the rotating of direction of the velocity. That's kind of important to know because then we have something else called spin. And spin is also rotation, but it rotates the actual particles. So let's say we want this to spin maybe two. Now you have a slowly spinning particles. If we want to go faster, you know, increase that value, say 30. Bam. Now we have these ninja stars basically floating up in the air. And then lastly, our variance as well. And I think you can guess what that does. But yeah, that is your basic particles. Something it gets more complicated when you want, say, custom bitmaps. So let's make a custom bitmap and show you how that works with a P emitter. So say I want the letter P to be a particle. How would we have this little letter P be a particle? Go to our P emitter, go to our style, and then change that to bitmap. And then connect this to the P emitter because it will pop up will show. And then now if we go to our P render, you see all our P's are here. But it's kind of running a little slow. It's basically it's using this whole image as the bitmap. You can see particle is only in like a certain part of the image, but it's rendering out 1920 by 1080 pixels for every single bitmap. And there's a hundred different particles. So you can see how slow that gets. So you want to be conscious of the bitmap that you put in here. You don't want to use like say a crop node and just crop this down to where however big you need this to be. The less pixels, the better. There's something like that will work. And now we will have RP, you know, we worse quality, but we don't want this to be that big anyway. So let's go back to our style, go down to our size controls and then bring this down like that. Maybe our size Z like that, then maybe our uh, variance up just like that as well. And then let's rotate this and back so it's like that. Yeah, now we have some floating P with our custom bitmap and this could be anything else. We can change this to A. We can change this whole thing to maybe say like a noise pattern as a lot of people do. Let's take this like this noise pattern I have here. It's already preset. Um, That's a lot. Let's see, let's make this go down like this and we can add more detail that. More contrast, brightness or not. And we flip this part up. I guess we can flip this around real quick and now make this that and make this gray. Now we have some sort of texture like this and now we have like floating clouds. Basically that's what that is. And let's just go and say like see this. And now it, each one is changing like that. So that is the custom bitmap. Let's go over to our style again and let's put this back on our end gone and let's make this bigger as well. I cannot see these things. There we go. All right, back here, our rotation to 45. And then let's go to more of the style controls. So there's all these other tabs over here, which are our color controls. We can change the color of the particle, of course. But then there's these color variants as well. And it gives us like a range that we could put our particle in. We can just mess around with this and now we can get different colors and it will go from a range of that color to something else. Let me see if I can get like the different colors on here. I'm not sure, hundred percent sure how to control it to get exactly the ones you want variance wise, but this way, this way, this way, the more range you have, the more 
more different lumen styles i guess you would have and then certain ways you would have different colors so right now we have like a dark magenta we have this light pink but you can also play around with a gradient map to make this easier we go down to the fade controls you can set a fade in and fade out for these particles so if we set in the fade right here now these particles will only come in after the ratio of time has passed and then it'll fade out at the end if we adjust this back half so we have that the size over life so you can make the size go bigger as long as it lives and then as it dies down it gets smaller so this is we have the lifespan of a particle in this graph at zero it'll be our normal size and then it will get bigger and then it will go down so let's let's watch this all these particles are getting bigger and then maybe they're shrinking now so you can look at the blur controls and allow us to give us a depth of field like effect so we blur it 2d see it we have blur over lifespan we can blur variance as well some some have different more blur or less we have the z depth of field blur so right now the depth of field in the foreground is getting blurred all the ones in the background are supposedly more sharp and then you can also set the focus area of it so go back in space that'll be more focus or we go front in space that'll be more focus and then we bring this forward more so everything in the background will be more blurry so like it's the the stuff in the foreground that's in focus so that's nice we also have a glow which i don't know if it's going to show yeah it's not it's not it doesn't, it doesn't show i wouldn't use this glow in order to put glow on this stuff i'll put a glow afterwards on this on these particles and then we also have the blur blend so we can adjust that if we need that for the most part that is all the p emitter controls there are other nodes like in order to control the movement of these particles like for example let's do like p vortex but now all these particles go in a circle and you can adjust the strength and power of this whole effect also the range that it does it in and power and just messing around with these controls basically i think they were more straightforward to understand as long as you understand what the velocity does you also have p directional force which will put it in a all in one direction kind of like a gravitational force but you can control where it's going that way or negative is going up and then control the direction with these so it basically gives you another velocity force and yeah if you just hit shift and p and then you can just scroll all these p tools like p custom it's a whole different bag of worms p flock it kind of each particle try and like comes together and clumps up p friction it moves and then slows down because of the friction force supposedly all this stuff i think is covered by darren Fernet. let me just look that up real quick darren Fernet, p emitters p vortex also particles he made custom bitmaps particles he made in lines in order to make a fireworks effect or these firework effects yeah there's just a lot of knowledge in these particle tutorials really suggest you go watch them if you really want to deep dive into them this is your guy if you're interested in this particle effect click this video right here otherwise subscribe and have a good day